In today's video I'm gonna show you the technique that stops the scroll. Every single time I'm on Instagram and I see that, I just can't skip the video because it simply looks too good. Generally speaking, it's a technique where you use different shades of one color. With that being said, I think we're just gonna get straight into Adobe After Effects. So we're back in the software, I'm just gonna hit Ctrl K. Here you have the comp settings. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hit Ctrl T and we're gonna type in whatever you want, I'm gonna type in shift. I'm gonna use the font Ephesis. I've started really liking this one recently and we're gonna probably bump up this size a little bit and uh, fix the typo. All right, so let's recenter and I'm gonna right click, go to new camera and we're gonna use a preset of 50 millimeters. We're gonna leave it to node camera, hit okay. Then we're gonna create a new null object, parent the camera to the null, rename and we're just gonna drop it underneath i'm also gonna change the color for clarity and with that being done i'm gonna just turn on the 3d layer so the next thing we need to do is create a keyframe for position in cam control i'm just gonna move forward and we're gonna get closer to the text i'm gonna select both easy ease go to the graph editor and we're just gonna create a sharp peak on the left so if i fit the graph that's how it's looking kind of like a letter l and just drag it all the way so the next thing we need some depth so i'm gonna head over here and pick round the rectangle tool i'm gonna create such a shape something like that then recenter and you know what i'm actually gonna leave stroke and you can turn off fill stroke width is fine so we're just gonna leave it like that i'm gonna turn it into 3d drop it below the shift we can open up the second view and here i would like to have it further away so for this i'm gonna scale up the shape i'm gonna drop it somewhere here i'm gonna hit ctrl d and drop it on the other side maybe something like that it's actually pretty cool. All right, so now we need to pick the color we want to use for this animation. So basically, this is going to be our base color, and then we're going to use different shades in order to achieve a unique look. So for this, I'm just going to select this one, go to stroke, and we're just going to pick something bluish. We can copy the hex code, and we're going to head over to the second shape and paste it here. I'm going to hit OK, and then we need to head over to our shift text, and I'm going to go to fill, but this time it's going to be something brighter. All right, let's hit OK. Then I'm going to go to new, solid and i'm just gonna call it bg let's hit ok drop it underneath and add the effect called gradient ramp so here what i want to do is change it for radial and we're just gonna drag that point to the middle i'm gonna swap the colors and what i'm gonna do is change white to also something bluish but this time this is gonna be a pretty dark shade of blue maybe something like that Let's hit okay and it's already looking pretty good the next thing we need to do is add a little bit of shake so i'm just gonna head over to the camera open up transform alt click point of interest and type in wiggle and in brackets let's say 1.5 comma 20. pretty good then what i'm gonna do is select these two shapes i'm gonna turn on the motion blur right click pre-compose and we're gonna call it shapes now we need to click that asterisk to get them back where they were and i'm gonna duplicate this i'm gonna turn on the 3d layer on only one of them and i'm gonna hit p then we're gonna get them closer just add a little bit of depth we could actually put it above shift so we know the order and that's how it's looking pretty cool already now i'm gonna right click go to transform flip horizontal and we have it on the opposite side i'm just wondering if it was better before you know what we can actually try differently i'm gonna right click go to transform and flip vertical Let's see now, I think it might be better. And on the custom v1, where are the shapes? They're actually too close to the text. So what I would do is just get them closer to the camera like that and then scale them down. Now we need to fix it a bit and let's see now. Okay, pretty good. So we got three different colors. We got a very dark blue in the back, then we got a pretty strong blue, and then we have a very bright one on the text. So the next thing I would do is probably duplicate shift, drop it underneath, and then we're gonna change the stroke, actually change it into stroke. I'm gonna also change the color, and we're just gonna pick something bluish again. I'm gonna hit OK. I'm gonna hit P, move it away, scale it up just like that. And what we want to do is hit T, and we're gonna decrease the opacity to like 5% maybe. So it's barely noticeable. Maybe a bit more something like that should do already we're starting to have a pretty cool scene so now a complete game changer would be adding deep glow to the text so i'm just gonna quickly do that and this is already looking fire i'm just gonna bump up the radius okay that's pretty cool i would probably go to the shapes and i feel like they are a bit too intense so we could go to the color and make it a bit brighter i'm gonna copy and paste it to the other shape layer yeah, I think it's a bit better. We could also head over to the camera, camera options, turn on depth of field, and then we need to actually figure out where the focus distance is. So this rectangle is gonna be responsible for focus distance. So we need to match it with the text. Okay, perfect. Now if I bump up the aperture, you're gonna notice that these things 
these shapes are getting out of focus. So this is gonna give us a unique look. And on top we need an adjustment layer. I'm gonna rename it to vignette. I'm gonna add the effect. And we could also go to the main text and I'm gonna alt click the exposure and I'm gonna type in wiggle and then say we're gonna type in 8 comma 0.4 so this is gonna give us that blinking effect but I feel like we need to make it faster so let's say 12 comma 0.4 then we're gonna go to cam control and I feel like we could extend it a bit went overboard so this is really sick. And just one extra touch I would do here is add something from my upcoming pack, which is about to be out. I'm really trying to do everything to release it as soon as possible. So let me just show you one of the assets. I'm just gonna create a new adjustment layer, rename it to shake, and we're just gonna go to the effects and presets. I'm gonna type in VHD for vertical, and we're gonna pick, let's say, saddle flick. So now we're gonna have that nice saddle flick in the very beginning, which is looking so dope. Let me just loop it. This is so good. Just one thing, we need to put it below vignette so we're not affecting this. Vignette should be always on top. So here we got the final effect. I think it's extremely engaging. Drop it on your IG and I think you're gonna get the clicks. So let's wrap it up and I will see you in the next one. Cheers guys.